This video will demonstrate a software setup using Linux and Jack Audio, and specifically the KX Studio suite of Jack Audio plugins. The ALSA Loop to Jack Bridge and the Pulse Audio Jack Bridge. Both of those are going to help us send a little more options as far as audio sources to your guest on your WebRTC. We're using Source Connect now, and so I want to I wanted to be able to send the guest media audio. This is Pulse Audio Jack Sync is where I'm receiving audio from the guest, so I don't want to send that back to them or they'll get a repeat and echo and everything. So we want to keep that separate. So I have my USB microphone I'm going to send to the guest. And here is uh, something that I wanted to achieve, and that was being able to send browser audio. So when you set this up, if you select the ALSA loop, the sound of loop demon here, the ALSA loop to jack bridge, then browser audio goes through here on the first browser that you select. And you don't select you don't do the pulse audio just yet. Don't check that pulse audio. We want to set up browser audio first. And I'm using Opera for this. So we have a podcast here. Uh, uh, the new rules went into effect a week. So that's coming through here and it's coming through this plugin right here. And once you have this set, as long as you don't close this browser out, you can click a tab and find another source of audio and it will also use that same plugin. Now for Source Connect I want to use the Pulse Audio because I want to keep the browser audio separate from what I'm receiving from WebRTC. WebRTC right now doesn't allow you to select your audio output device. That probably will change in the future but at the moment it's not available so this is a workaround I found so that I can send my browser audio to the Source Connect guest. So once you've activated the Pulse Audio bridge then, then bring up Chrome because Source Connect only works with Chrome and it will default to the Jack Source and the Jack Sync. So if we had select your audio output device it would say jack sync right there since we're using those plugins so now all audio to the guest and from the guest are coming over these plugins the pulse audio jack source and the pulse audio jack sync I'm using Ardour to record everything and to set up all the tracks of audio and to apply some plugins let's go over those plugins for a second now for my microphone, uh, this is the R Doer. There's the four tracks. I have a track for each audio source. For media audio, I'm using Aqualung. This is the incoming audio from my Source Connect guest over Chrome. This is my USB microphone using Alsa in this last command here goes right into Jack and I'm using desktop audio with this ALSA to Jack bridge here from the Opera browser. So I have all four tracks and as soon as I hit record every track has to be armed and then hit record and it'll start recording the podcast your and your interview. So in, in this mixer for my microphone all kinds of plugins. You got LAD, LADSPA. I'm going through these really quick. LV2 and then at the bottom you have the uh, VST, the Linux VSTs. So you can choose any native plugin on Linux in order to pop in here. And for the microphone that I'm using, I'm us first using a compressor and I've set it up with these settings here and that's not so important 
to memorize these or anything or write them down. You just use your microphone and your voice and you test and see how much compression you want, how much makeup gain, ratio and all that threshold. This is a pretty nice plugin. This is an LV2 plugin. So then that goes to a gate and without the gate get a lot of room noise. So this gate is very helpful. This is a CAF plugin. The gate goes to a CAF equalizer plugin. And here's my voice without the plugin as far as the uh, equalizer goes. So without this five band equalizer it sounds like this. And now the equalizer is back in. Just a little little extra bass and a few areas where we tweak it up just a little bit and at the kind of pull it down at the uh, outer edges of the high frequencies. And for final we have a de -esser. and especially when you have the ch symbols. So here's what it out here's what it sounds like without the de -esser. And you can look at this uh, spectrum analyzer here. So you, it took out this super high stuff, and you could see that it was lower in volume. So that's a pretty nice plug-in for voice. So that is for my microphone. I have a USB microphone here. And for desktop audio, I'm just using a compressor so that if I'm playing audio from YouTube or something, that volume can vary quite a bit. And this will bring it almost like an automatic gain control and keep it at a certain level. So I don't have to monkey with that. And on my output from Source Connection, what I'm receiving from the guests, I have a compressor on that too. And you can set that up depending on how your how your voice and how the the volume goes from your guest to you. So let's play a little bit of desktop audio and it's going to come through this plugin right here. Again, we're using Opera. We brought that up first. So ago, thousands of these small webcasters have gone off the air. Um, you know, they, these were hobbies. A hobbyist can't afford $500 a month. So they were all wiped out. So I'll lower it down here as with the, the uh, they had invested sliders on Ardour's mixer. And, and all that kind of stuff. Then as we move up the food chain. And we have a meter here. The, We've got an oscilloscope to kind of keep an eye on the uh, audio forms had an even and larger volumes they and waveform shapes. Strictly on their spectrum audience, analysis. On their so and their these plugins here exactly the same are from amount. Basically everyone was paying Jowl. the same. The little guys the medium-sized guys, even Pandora, GTK. unless they had a job dot select. The labels, they were paying so we come the in here. That's something you can get in your package manager. Job and, dot select. Know, et cetera, et cetera. That brings up this and GUI. So the, the folks and you just who had pick which one you want audiences and hit, like hit Soma, it, and it'll bring it out, and it'll go Martini into Jack. And you can wire it up places. however you find useful. We're in a real spot. Uh, so I've you know, got a stereo V meter. My input my transmission to my source connect guest is on the left in the trays, and what I hear from him uh, most is on the right now we're faced with so let's hear what's coming from my guest still have the opportunity right until you're dead uh, yeah. you can you can pick up some instrument somewhere uh, and uh, and play it so yeah this is a great this is a great tool I think and I I, I really like that um, especially kids can get involved and pick this up <clears throat> Um, and use it and play with it because I think that these types of tools really engage with with kids and help them understand not only um, how to how to read and write music but also like I said you know transposing things for different instruments or so that's the basic setup here again the idea was to be able to send many different types of audio sources to the guest and yet not get any feedback and I could only do that do that by using two separate browsers and two separate I'll set to jack plugins. And just to review, the first plugin is the Alsa to Jack plugin. The second plugin is the Pulse Audio to Jack bridge. So we have the Alsa to Jack bridge, the Pulse Audio to Jack bridge. So Alsa 
The Alsa to Jack Bridge is just for that cr uh, opera. And the Pulse Audio to Jack Bridge. Chrome will stick on that. Once, once you activate the Pulse Audio, anything else you bring up defaults right to that. So that's why this works. So I'm using the Pulse Audio to Jack Bridges for both the in input and output from Source Connect now. Ordur is a really diverse recording program and you can record all the separate tracks. It'll, that should make uh, your podcast recording pretty smooth. And this is very high fidelity over Source Connect now and I'm using their very best at 512 kilobits in stereo. They have quite a few selections that you can try but this is almost like an ISDN connection and many have called it an alternative to ISDN. We have the CPU scale to performance just to avoid X runs and make, th make the audio a little bit uh, more cooperative as far as dropouts and audio glitches and audio artifacts. And uh, it's basic setups, I think. It pretty much covers it. Just how to get multiple audio, audio sources, including browser audio, so that you can send all of that, any or all of that, to your guests and interview them on the content if, if that's uh, the scope of your interview. Thanks for watching.